Hello everyone, it's Alessandro Sticchi on behalf of PCR Online. We have the terrific honor today of being here with Professor Alan Cribier. Prof, thank you very much for being uh, with us today. My pleasure, Alexandro. Uh, we are uh, really, really interesting to ask you one question. How this incredible revolution started 20 years ago? Well, actually, it's a long story, you know. Uh, I will try to make it short, but uh, first of all, uh, when I came back uh, from the uh, United States in 77, uh, uh, I was working with uh, uh, Gans, uh, Swan and Gans, and you know, in the team of the people, we invented the Swan and Gans character. So they, they, they teach me how to, uh, uh, to detect uh, unmet clinical needs, you know. And so when I was uh, back to France and uh, I was uh, looking around, you know, what are the, the very important clinical needs, and I find that uh, the, the aortic stenosis wa uh, wa was uh, a matter of uh, concern because uh, most of the patients at the time in the 80s uh, were uh, turned down by the surgeon for, uh, for um, a valve replacement uh, because they were supposed to be too old and uh, the age was 70 years of age. You know, so it, it, it was a number of people who were left on the, on the side uh, dying. And so I, I started to think uh, we, we should do something for them you know, to, uh, to try to save their life because uh, without any valve replacement, they were supposed to die within uh, one hour or two, two years. You know, so um, I, uh, I, I first started to uh, propose dilating the valve with a balloon, so we, I, I created the balloon aortic valve replacement, and we did the first man in uh, September 85. And then uh, it was a lot of enthusiasm in the world, you know, tens of thousands of patients were treated by balloon aortic valve replacement because this, it was the only way to save the life of these patients. And uh, unfortunately, after uh, five, six years, you know, it appears that there was a strong limitation, which was the risk stenosis rate after ballooning the valve, you know. So the, the we are going back to the beginning of the story, you know, with the same gradient and the same problems. So I, I thought, uh, what, what could we do now? What could we do? So we give up or we try to find a solution against risk stenosis. And the, the whole story of the valve development was coming from the need to find the solution to the issue of valvular stenosis after balloon aortic valvuloplasty. So it's the same research program from 85 to the valve. It's the same research program, you know, trying to get the solution for, for treating the patients with uh, 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 considered by the surgeons as uh, inoperable. Yes. And uh, then uh, the, the, the concept of valve, you know, came from the fact that uh, uh, mm. When I was dilating the valve, I saw that the balloons could be uh, totally expanded, you know, pushing aside the calcium. So I thought that maybe we should uh, build a stent uh, with uh, uh, enough strong, uh, strength, you know, to, to push aside, to maintain the, the valve open. Yeah. Yeah. But the stent was not enough. We had to put the valve inside, so it took years, you know, and uh, to, to, uh, to find, a fa finally, after five years, you know, I, it was a complete failure to, tr to find some help from the medical company, to the biomedical companies, to build a valve with a stent. You know, they, they all said that you are crazy, it's insane, you know, it will never work. And uh, so we did, uh, we had a very interesting uh, um, autopsy lab experiment in, uh, in Rouen showing that uh, there was enough, enough room for placing a stent you know, without occluding the coronary arteries, destroying the mitral valve, and uh, so I came with some data. I took a patent and so on, and uh, I found, I tried to find the biomedical society interested in developing, and uh, it was a complete failure, as I said. And so finally, we had to, to build a startup with two engineers uh, from the uh, United States, from Johnson & Johnson and Martin Leon. We created a company, Percutaneous Valve Technology, and we found a partner uh, in Israel, a very small company b based in Israel, you know, Iran R&D, and uh, uh, they, they managed you know, to, to make a prototype corresponding to my wishes. And then we moved to, uh, to a long uh, time of experiment during two, three years, you know, uh, with uh, uh, work on the lab, you know, to find, to, to improve the prototype. And then we did uh, uh, a lot of animal experiment, you know, to, uh, to create the technology, you know, necessary to do that. And uh, finally, uh, finally, uh, on, uh, in 2002, in April, we had the first patient. And uh, so we decided to try on the pa dying patients with all the contraindications of TAVI, the worst in the world. <laughs> and uh, we succeeded. So it was, uh, I was optimistic since uh, this day. I'm sorry, I was a little long, but it's a long no, story. No, 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 <laughs> but it's uh, the most interesting story uh, in a revolution, uh, such mm. a, a great revolution. 
and uh, uh, probably uh, the question that uh, uh, everybody is thinking now is uh, after these uh, amazing 20 years uh, of uh, success uh, of treatment uh, uh, this impressive revolution uh, probably is a revolution that deserves a Nobel Prize because <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> <Yeah. Thank> you. <laughs> and what is uh, after this t um, travel of 20 years uh, your uh, next idea what uh, do you suggest uh, for uh, young uh, innovators for uh, um, someone who want to challenge again the field, the cardiovascular field, and bring some new revolution? Yes, well, the, it, it, it is difficult, you know, and uh, uh, actually the, the example of Valve is uh, very particular because today, you know, with uh, more than 1.5 million people in 20 years, you know, it's extremely successful, but uh, you don't have to uh, to think about something will, uh, that will definitely revolutionize medicine. This is not the, the, the goal, but you when you are a young guy interested in uh, medicine and uh, if you want to participate in the development uh, you uh, you should uh, learn how to detect what is really necessary you know the clinical needs you know the uh, when you want to make an invention uh, you you it has to correspond to a need and very often you know people are just trying to improve something existing uh, so this yeah. is not the, the, the best you, you just open your eyes and say well this should be improved. And now, after that, you have to be strong enough in your mind to say, I am the one that can improve that and uh, that can find an issue, you know? So it's a kind of personality. It's a very special personality. If you want to be an innovator, you, you have to be excited by the fact of being able to bring a solution to many issues in medicine. So it's, uh, it's a little foolish, I must say. <laughs> and after that, you know, you, uh, you have to, uh, to demonstrate to yourself that you are right, so uh, you have to do some kind of work, you know, to prove that uh, your idea is not totally, totally insane and that it's not the theory that uh, you could really. This is what we did when you did uh, when we uh, managed to do uh, the uh, postmortem uh, examination. You know, so the, the going through postmortem in in cardiology, for example, is extremely important. And uh, after that, you, you you can try to test your idea with your colleagues. You know. And uh, you you will have an, uh, a kind of response, you know. And generally speaking, I must say that uh, you are considered as totally insane always, because in medicine it's difficult to uh, to invent something. Uh, people think that if it does not exist, it's because it cannot exist. And uh, so uh, you you have to to jump uh, uh, above a number of hurdles, you know, to. Uh, you have to face the opposition of people. You, uh, generally speaking, you are considered as somebody a little crazy. You know that. The, the, so, be uh, sure of yourself. Uh, believe in yourself, and uh, be perseverant. Because, uh, of course, uh, you will have a lot of obstacles to jump. And uh, so, uh, and never, never be discouraged. You know. So this is something also that you have to learn. You know. Because uh, when you have uh, a strong opposition everywhere, and it was the case with balloon aortic valvuloplasty, it was the case with the valve, you know, there was a 100% opposition against you. So you have to persevere, you have to make sure that you are right, and to defend your, uh, your idea all the time, even when, when it works, you know. Because, for example, uh, uh, if I take the example of the, of the valve, uh, after uh, 100 patients implanted successfully and uh, with good result, when I was presenting the data in the meetings, I was, uh, there were people raising their hand and say, saying that they, w they did not believe in that at all. It will never work. So uh, they said that you are lucky and uh, but the next patients will die and so on. It, it's, a, it's a real struggle <laughs> against the opposition of many, many people. And uh, after that, when it works and when uh, people are enthusiastic, you know, it's good for you. So, so uh, I encourage the young, young guys, you know, who, who, who are, uh, who, who think uh, dedicating their time to uh, to innovate something, uh, to to make it, do it, and be courageous. <laughs> Fantastic! Thank okay. you very much, bro, for your kindness. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Sir. Thank Continue you. to follow us on PCR yeah. Online from yeah. Euro PCR 2022.